following takes place between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. I'm your huckleberry. David Morgan. Jason, please introduce David Morgan. Joined with us now live on the phone is David Morgan, publisher of the Morgan Report and a leading U.S. expert on precious metals investing. You can learn more at silver-investor.com. David, how are you doing today? Doing quite well, thank you. So what do you think of the latest uh, little bit of pressure we've seen underneath the precious metals in the last few days? Well, we have, and uh, they may be coming under more pressure. I just did an interview with the street.com moments ago, and they were talking about you know China. And uh, that's kind of the news item of de jour of the day. Uh, <clears throat> China's story has been out there for quite some time, meaning that China's been bashed for quite some time. The stock market is off heavily. In fact, I think the news is... Uh, basically worn out, even though it, it comes to the fore. The uh, line in the sand for me, I just did some technical work yesterday. It looks like around the $1,600 level for, for gold and around the $31 level. And the, technically, those aren't exact numbers on the charts, but they're round numbers. And commodities markets, from my long years in these markets, they do not like round numbers. So there's always a psychology around a round number. And if gold goes under 1600 and silver are under 31, uh, I'd, I'd look for silver to then, uh, you know, move probably and test the $30 level. I really don't see silver going below 30 for very long, and I don't see gold going below 1600 for very long. Time will tell. I would love to see him dip back down there, if, ever long enough for me to add. Well, I think you're right. Uh, that's what I've told our readers to, you know, be prepared, uh, don't be scared. Go ahead and plan to buy under that level. And if you're using leverage, which, of course, is always dangerous, but if you do, then be prepared that if it moves substantially lower than those levels to either get out or be prepared to add. So well, certainly would... if you approach the market thinking, if you're thinking you know, correctly, you can certainly take advantage of those situations. I would add, I'd back the truck up and add, particularly if we can get silver down in the, like the 26 handle we saw for a day. In between the two holidays? Well, 26, and I'd argue a day, it was just a few trades, and it came back up, and it's done it twice. In fact, I actually talked about that to the look over my shoulder service. But look, these two times that it got here, it wasn't here very long. It was, you know, it did it during the day. I'm not arguing that. But as far as you look at the amount of trades that actually took place at the $26 and change level, it was pitifully small, which indicates strongly that, Anybody in the know that really wants the physical metal is buying like crazy at that level. And once that order is filled, whether it's two contracts or ten, it's a very small amount. The market comes right back up. So, so I, I also addressed if you're thinking it could get there, put an open order in. You know, put an open order in at twenty six dollars and eighty seven cents or whatever. Make up a number around the twenty six level and see if it gets filled. Likewise with gold, uh, like a fifteen sixty or something like that. Yes. The principles apply to both the metals, you bet. David, if these central banks around the world, with all their money printing, have basically put a floor underneath the stock market, Peter Schiff recently said that they had strapped a booster rocket onto the precious metals and that we will see them take off. Well, I admire Peter's work a great deal, and I... I tend to agree. Uh, I think some of us, uh, including myself, get a little bit anxious at times. I mean, I've been you know, forecasting these prices on an annual basis for like 12, 13 years now, and I've been wrong twice. Um, I think we still have a, a bit of tough slogging ahead. I really do. I think we're not going to see any real strength in the metals price-wise until probably the September time frame. But, you know, again, I could be wrong, and there's, again, as I've said, many black swans out there, so there could be a one-off event, some anomaly out there that we can't forecast that takes these metals, you know, with that booster rocket going. I don't see it if the, if the conditions stay basically as they are right now. David, one of our listeners, Bill in Norcross, he wanted to get your thoughts. In addition to China, obviously, India has been somewhat in the news lately as this past week, India's finance minister proposed to double the customs duty up to 4%. We've also heard news of the Reserve Bank of India proposing a new set of guidelines aimed at controlling some of the activities of the gold financing companies. And, and Bill wanted to get your thoughts on how these events coming out of India might 
translate into gold prices here in the future? Great question. It's going to be tough to be succinct. Obviously, at the on the face, it would have some effect because of the increased costs. But the truth of the matter is that most of the India, especially on the silver side, there's a way around the law, and I think that will still be in place. In other words, there's a way to get uh, bullion in and out using the jewelry manufacturers because they have a mandate, <clears throat> excuse me, depending on the form that the precious metals take, whether or not they're taxed or not. Basically, there's been a lot of movement of precious metals in and out of India for years. That's basically on the black market or the unregulated market. I don't expect that will change, and that's actually the lion's share. So hopefully that helps. Uh, obviously, the government's probably trying to get a handle on that, and it may have some effect, but I'm going to reserve judgment and wait and see. David, are the governments around the world still the major buyers of gold right now? Have we started seeing any um, retail interest in gold? From what I've been able to determine, the main buyers of physical gold right now are government entities or central banks uh, who've become net buyers the last few years and the larger managed monies. In other words, the uh, hedge fund managers, uh, pension fund managers, and that type of thing. Retail buying is, is off. Uh, the people that are in are basically holding what they have. Not many are adding to their positions. And the new buyers that want to buy are waiting for that ultimate low price. If I knew what it was and what day, I'd tell you. I really don't. But as we discussed earlier in the show, below 1600 and below 31 on silver and gold, respectively, I think are great times to buy. David, let's tell them about your service real quick. Okay. the uh, I think I'd, I'd like to just divert that question to where you can find me, and there's a couple good ways. One is the YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and type in Silver Guru, you'll find me. The other is the Twitter feed, which is uh, Silver, tw- Silver Guru 22, and that's on the Twitter feed. The Twitter feed is stuff that I read. I read a great deal every day, but he's put up two, three, or four uh, things that I've read that I think are really important for people to follow this sector, especially the, the metals, but also economic news that has a very big impact on the metals. And the video channel is uh, kind of an educational uh, format, that videos that I do, and shows like this that I do during the week, we put all those onto the YouTube channel, so it's archived. So if someone wants to go back and say, geez, I wonder what David said uh, on the Butler on Business program in the middle of March, uh, they can play it and say, geez, the guy was absolutely wrong. No. <laughs> that certainly doesn't happen very often, of course. <laughs> Not often, but it happens occasionally. David, well, you're one of our favorites, and we look forward to talking to you again. Now, one more time, silver-investor.com, and then what's the Twitter? Twitter is silverguru22. Thank you very much, David. Silverguru22. Thank you. All right, thank you. This is Alan Butler. We'll be back, speaking of Peter Schiff, with a little bit of his commentary on the other side of this break. The markets are still essentially flat. We'll see in a couple of minutes. 